What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Mr. Billy, representing Broward County Libraries. We are kicking off the 2021 Arlick Comic Con Sci-Fi Convention and Festival. Look, we got a special guest. You know, you know how we cook in Broward County. We got the one and only Suey Davis Okamboa. What's going on, my brother? <laughs> I'm good, Billy. Thank you. That was a great welcome. Hey, man, you know, we got to come with the energy. It's Friday, so you know people ready for the weekend. They may be looking for a good read. We got Son of the Storm available at Broward County Libraries. Look, if you can't stop by your local Broward County Library, get your library card or get your e-card, and you can get an e-book of the resource as well, man. Look, I just got to read off some of your accolades, brother, because you know, man, you're doing some positive things for the community, man. Um, This brother is a Nigerian author of fantasy and sci-fi, man. His latest novel, Son of the Storm, is in Broward County Libraries, man. It's an epic fantasy trilogy. Um, Brother, I I really, really love what you're doing. Um, I'm going to kick it off just by, first and foremost, what inspired you to become an author, man? Wow, let's see. Um, I guess it started by, like, I, I've always loved stories, right? Um, right? I never really thought I was going to be telling them, but like I loved reading them. I've always loved reading, you know, watching TV, <laughs> pretty right. much all, all the forms, right? Comics and everything, like all the stories come in. But I guess there's this like, there's always this part, right? Where you get to a point where you want to maybe mimic what you see. Like, okay, I want to like, I have some ideas, right? I want right. to try them out. And, and then when I started like trying them out, I found that, I found out two things. The first was that um, a lot of the patterns that I was trying to tell my stories in didn't really fit for the stories because I guess the stories were engaging with something um, different, right? That there, right. that wasn't like part of the mainstream or like yeah. part of the usual system, right? Mm-hmm. And then the other one was also when I tried to write them, I found that um, I didn't have as much stuff out there that like represented me like what I wanted to do with right. my work and say you know so so I guess I was like well you know it's one of those things where if you want to see a story in the world then you can write it and, and I started right now I was like okay fine if, if I'm not seeing this work out there then I might as well be the one writing the work out there and I just really started telling those stories for myself and people like me and it kind of like took off from there and, and, and that's pretty dope because of me as a black male librarian and as a storyteller for kids uh, representation is everything and especially mm-hmm. you being a young black author uh stepping into different genres that's not let's say quote unquote not represented by us is mm-hmm. something that's dope so what were some of the barriers and challenges when you decided to try to get in the game <laughs> <laughs> okay so like um so i'm nigerian right and i, I didn't really like move um out of the country for un- until 2018 i think like permanently mm-hmm. so um one of the first challenges was like geography right being able to like write from a particular space into a global space um was difficult in the beginning and, and it's interesting because I, I never really planned to do that. Like that wasn't the plan. When I started writing, I was just writing because I was like, I want to tell the story for myself and just to like sort of see myself at least, right? Um, but then I sold my first book actually while I was living in Lagos, uh, which was, you oh. know, not really, which is, you know, kind, kind of unusual in, 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 at the time, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I guess I started thinking about uh, so, like, my first book, David Mogul, God Hunter, it takes place in Lagos. And if you know anything about Lagos, Lagos is, like, very multicultural. It's very multilingual. So we had, like, English. You had Nigerian pidgin. You had, like, Yoruba. You had all these languages. And I was thinking that, you know, I was worried, right, that there's so many people out there who would be like, we don't know what's going on. We don't know what this means. Um, but at the same time, I was, like, keen on like not losing that part of myself and like not misrepresenting the city itself too right mm-hmm. like try not to like sal- you know over sanitize something so much right. that it no longer carries the spirit of the place and you know the cultures and everything and so that balancing act i think was like something that i started thinking of right out the gate mm-hmm. i think um 
I think I got I got a lot of support, luckily, from fellow authors, uh, oh. especially like um, black authors in diaspora. Oh. Uh, they were like, you know, telling me it's okay. You know, you can you can like go go ahead and like just put yourself on the page what you think is like most representative, and that's what I did, and it actually ended up really well because I got support from the publisher. A lot of readers like really appreciated the fact that you know it did that, and I I think that sort of like gave me the <laughs> <laughs> the, the like spirit you know mm -hmm. to keep doing that and that's pretty much what I've been doing ever since I'm like writing these stories in a way that is like as true to the to representing the self as possible it's I think this is something that every you know black person every person of color is going to like always face going into like um this ecosystem that has yeah. its own um patterns and 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 in institutionalizations that have yeah. existed, you know, for a long time and have also been quite exclusive in their existence. Yeah. And so you always have to think about that balancing. Every time you're writing a story, every time you're thinking about stuff, you, uh, you know, how do I present this? How do I represent this character, this tale, this language, this approach? You always think about how it fits in this, you know, very institutionalized system. Um, and that's, I guess, a, a burden, the burden of being an author, right? Coming from right. this kind of thing. But uh, it's, it's something that I, it, it is. It like, I, you actually kind of like led into my second question because, you know, you're talking about your writing process. And mm -hmm. yes, you're representing a certain demographic, but you want all readers to be captivated by your book. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you're going through your writing process, like for an example, for this book right here, versus this one in your Minecraft book, was the writing process the same? Or you like, you know what, let me kind of broaden my scope as far as trying to appeal to the young reader or reader. That's a good point. Um, with, with Son of the Storm, um, I was lucky because I was getting to build a lot of stuff. So I could, um, whenever I came upon like that question, I could make a decision, but I didn't need to always represent something that existed, right? I could just build the thing that sort of fit what I was trying to do mm -hmm. because it's like set in the secondary world, right? Um, and so I, I, I found it easier to answer those questions. Not that they were less tough, but they were just, um, the, the, the pathway to answering them was like easier. I could say, okay, when all else fails, just mix stuff up. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. That's how you can hey, be creative, man. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> with Minecraft, it was slightly different because yes, I do agree with you. There was that part of me that felt I was beholding to, because I'm writing for like these young folks and I was thinking about myself right. back then, right? Part of what brought me into writing was the fact that I wanted to see myself represented in stories. Yeah. I was thinking about that duty to that boy, right? That boy me and, and that boy me now. And I was like, I want to do right by these people so one of the first things i told the folks at minecraft was like this is going even if like I, I told them i'm not going to set it in like a minecraft world yeah. completely i'm gonna actually set huge chunks of it in on the ground and like i want to see how i want people to see how young kids who are black kids also play minecraft and like enjoy it in the same way in real life and also within the game right so so we had those discussions right out the bat and i was like that's what right. i'm gonna do it was different <laughs> from what I was used to, but but I I, I I was like, I'm up to this challenge. This is this is something I'm doing because I want to sort of do right, you know? Uh, and it actually ended up really well, um, both like fit seamlessly and we had a lot of like uh, back and forth on the story and how it could work. It was, it, it's, I would say it's been one of the, you know, the most satisfying, experience Fire. writing wise <laughs> so far. It's, it's dope because me as a black male librarian when we have these uh these kids coming to the library and they're playing roblox they're playing minecraft i'm a gamer myself i don't play those <laughs> games but when i'm trying to suggest books and stories you want mm. to have them to have stories they're captivated by where they need to see us stories that paint yes. pictures of us it goes a long way as far as helping them develop the lifelong love of reading so that's like really really dope man and one of the questions I want to ask you is, okay, you said you had support from a lot of mm -hmm. authors. Um, who were some of your favorite authors that inspired you to be like, you know what, I'm about to get to cooking. I'm about to start getting in the game and writing um, my books. 
So that's a good one. Uh, let's see. When, when I, so science fiction and fantasy at the, at the, that features, I would say, I mean, like, first of all, that features characters of African descent to like whatever degree wasn't really a thing, right? right. So at the time when I started reading uh, fantasy and science fiction. Um, and I, saw, I, I think I started getting a lot of that recognition that, you know, Black people could be in stories by just reading Black authors when they're doing like science fiction and fantasy. So um, there was, you know, I, interestingly, I did read a bunch of Toni Morrison. I did read, read, nice. read a bunch of like, um, like African authors of the post-colonial times, like Chinua Achebe or like Aikwe um, Arma, and, and we read a lot of that in like literature classes right. um, when I was growing up. Uh, and I sort of like um, pulled a lot from there, right? I pulled a lot from there. I put a lot from, from what I'm going to describe as like the, the oral storytelling traditions, right. of, especially from West Africa, right? Because a lot of the stories I learned, I heard growing up were mostly oral, right? And there's a certain pattern to them as well. There, there's, there are certain musicalities, there's certain, you know, the way the story is told is like different, right? So I pulled a bit from there into like the way I tell stories. I can tell um, I'm a storyteller. I see. I see, it. I see it, brother. Yeah. So there, there's that, right? Because like that was a very like critical part of my own storytelling understanding, right? Um, I, I drew a lot as well from from like um, the visual storytelling cultures, both Hollywood and like um, local um, um, film industry in Nigeria, which is Nollywood. So I like drew from these, right? Oh. Um, and then just like. Later on, in, in, later on, I think later in like the mid 2010s, I started like getting into some authors, black authors of science fiction, like right. Bernie and, and Butler. Um, and then that's when like, I also get got into folks like Nilo Hopkins and so yep. and, and, you know, NK Jemison also came out at the same time. So it was like uh, uh, Nadio Carrefour as well. So it's like, you, I could finally see how all these things I was bringing with me could fit and I think that was like what gave me like that push finally to be like, okay, now you need to like give it a shot because you can sort of see it. Um, all this time I knew it could, I knew it, there was probably space, but I just yeah. hadn't seen it being done, you know? So, so and, and, and that's really dope. So being that I can see that you're a creator and you're, you're talking about when you're writing in your depictions, you want people to see what you see through your mm -hmm. eyes. Um, mm -hmm. In your particular genre, of fantasy mm. and science fiction, that's kind of rare from our demographic. So mm -hmm. let me ask you a question. Like when you were engaging with some of your peers and family mm -hmm. members, it was like, look, I'm on about I'm on going to be an author, but <laughs> also be a fantasy author. What was mm -hmm. the reception like? <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you know anything about like Nigerian parents, they're like very notorious for being like you only have like three choices of like what you can do with your life. Okay. Like, yeah, you better be a doctor or like an engineer or like an accountant or like there's very, you know, like a lawyer. It's very like set rules and like anything else <laughs> out of that is like no. Or like, um, and and I don't know, this is like not often common knowledge, but like my first degree is in engineering. I, I read that. <laughs> I, was I was like, okay, how did that correlate, man? Yeah, yeah. Um, and because I, again, you know, I come from a space where they're like, great, if you want to write, that's great. We're not going to like not, we're not going to like prevent you from writing. But right. we also want to like see you, you know, go down a path that we understand. <laughs> yeah. um, and so in, in that beginning, uh, I, I wrote a lot even while I was in like university. Um, I, um, my first novel was written while I was working. Um, and I've worked as an engineer and all of that. Um, I don't, my, my, my parents are professors, both of them. So like they understand being like a writer of sorts and storyteller and they get that. Um, and so they, they always gave me that support. They never really said, no, oh, that's dope. They just ex yeah. They just expected me to like do it alongside something. They right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's interesting because now all of that has sort of commingled because now I'm a, I'm a university professor. 
Um, uh, yeah. yeah, and so now they understand that. So like now they really understand that. They're like, oh, okay, now we get you, you know, so you can do whatever you want now because we understand what you're doing now. Um, but there was always that like support from them, but also like from other authors who, um, so there's this author called Tade Thompson, right? He's, um, he's, he's a British Nigerian um, um, science fiction author. And I remember at the time when I was like unsure, you know, he would like give me some advice and like, oh, look at me, I'm a medical practitioner, but I'm also like an author. You can like do anything you right. want. And I think that sort of like gave me, you know, um, an eye into the fact that, you know, I could try and, you know, get to that, this space, right, where, where I've, I've sort of like gotten into now. So being that this is Arlick Comic-Con, science fiction convention, I got to ask you some out-of-the-box questions, you know. Um, <laughs> sure. What is your favorite comic comic book character? It could be Marvel, DC, or if, they, if you don't have one, what would be your perfect comic book character? Hmm. So the, the truth is I actually don't have one yet. Um, but if I think so far, the, per, the character that was like closest that I would probably stand on would be probably Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> like I'm, I'm a big Mandalorian fan, um, big Grogu fan or baby Yoda. Right. <laughs> so, and it's interesting because like I've, I haven't even like done a lot of like Star Wars, um, like gone into like the world itself. Um, and I'm, I, I think I like know more about like Star Trek, but like eventually I think when the Mandalorian really hit, it really like hit that sweet spot for me as, mm -hmm. as a science fiction, you know, slash fantastic person. I, I was like, this really does it for me. And, and I'm a, I have like three, you know, I have like four, pieces of Mandalorian. <laughs> so, so I'm a big Mandalorian fan. And if there was to be a comic book, I think I would love it to be. <laughs> That's dope. So um, I took a look at your social media page, man. You have a large following, man. And I just started following you. So I'm gonna give you a shout out, man, uh, afterwards. Um, what do you, you're gonna, you have a large following, man. Like, what do you say to that inspiring author that's looking at you to be like, hey, I want to follow this path in writing this particular type of genre. What would be the type of advice that you would give? Because I was just listening to what you said. You said you didn't really follow um, Star Wars like that. And I was like, you know what? That might have been a good thing because you might kind of taint your brain as far as creativity versus just blossoming and being in your own creative realm. So what would you say mm -hmm. to those young, inspiring authors? Yeah, I would say there is no one right way to do it. Um, my path so far has been so unconventional, pretty much everywhere I go, when I start talking and saying, this is what I did, people feel like, really, that can happen? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes. Um, I, I think it's like, I, li I like to share my story because I like to demonstrate that um, all, all paths are not gonna be the same. Even if there's like paths well taken, yeah. the, your paths will likely, you know, and I, like, I, I would like everyone who wants to do this right to think of their path as like its own thing and sort of like trust in it and follow that and often it tends it will tend to lead you down to a space that you will occupy that i think only you can occupy mm -hmm. uh, and that's what you want as as a storyteller right you want to be right. telling your stories from a place of specificity and yes and, and bringing something new to to the general space as opposed to just you know uh, re you know retreading the same path Dope, dope, dope. Now, out of all the books that you've written, which one's considered the baby? Like, you you know, like, you know, this the one, like, you most proud of, or do you equally view them all the same? Because me as a storyteller, when I do story mm -hmm. times and I'm reading stories, like, every time you read a book, it's supposed to be a new experience. And mm -hmm. just listening to you talk, that's kind of what I get out of that when you're talking about your books. Is that kind of like we're on the same wavelength with that? I think, so, yeah, yeah. Um, every book is a new, is a different path. It's a different journey. It, it asks different things of you. Um, and so often it's, it's only like often in retrospect that you're like, oh, maybe this book. But like usually when you're in the process, it tend, each book is asking something very different from you. Um, 
so far, like I, I have two books out, right? David Mogul, Son of the Storm. Minecraft is going to be out. Um, the Haven Trials, that's what it's called. Oh, it's going to um, be in North Regional Library. Yeah. Best believe that. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, um, I, I don't even, you know, so far, I don't really think there's like a baby, baby, because they all sort of like meet different needs for me as a storyteller. David Mogul was like the story of like me sort of defying, trying to defy everything that usually would fit in that genre right like that that urban fantasy type i wanted to like almost you know change that to like and fit the exact space i was occupying in the world at the time which was they lost nigeria at the time right um and and son of the storm is doing something different it's a series but like it was also like much bigger as a concept in my head and it took me like much more time to think about what I wanted to say and I'm still thinking about what I'm saying so it's a whole different process while Minecraft as I explained earlier was yeah. like me trying to like yeah. meet a certain need you know so I guess in different ways they're all babies it's like how you have multiple right. children right I mean, <laughs> sorry, maybe you have one favorite but you don't say it yeah you gonna say it <laughs> Well, let me ask you one last question, man, before we wrap up. Um, are you a hip hop fan? Yeah, to a degree. <laughs> to a degree. So, you know, I don't know if you've you seen the verses on, on IG with the different artists or whatnot. I'm going to do a quick little rapid fire and give you a picks on a couple of things. Okay. Drake or <laughs> Kendrick Lamar? I'd go with Kendrick. Kendrick? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, Diddy or Dr. Dre? I'll go with Dr. Dre. <laughs> and I know this is like, this, this is one of the, this is one of the Coast Wars, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna go with Dr. Dre. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I'm gonna hit you. Nas or Jay-Z? Wow, that's a tough one. Um, yeah. This is a very, this is a perennial debate. Um, Always a good debate. I, I, I think, I think flow-wise, uh, this is gonna be me trying to like step in between, but like I'd say, I think flow wise, I'd go with Jay Z, but like, like overall as a content wise, I'd go with Nas. <laughs> it, it's hard to pick, man. It's hard to pick. It's, it's, hard. Like, it's like Kobe, LeBron, all that type of stuff. <laughs> exactly. There's there's always something like you love about this. <laughs> like, yeah. All right, my brother. Thank you so much, man. Tell everybody where they can find you at, where your website, the IG, Facebook, man, plug them in, man. <laughs> so I'm, I'm mostly on like Twitter and Instagram, which you can find me at Sui Davies on both. Um, so that's Sui with S-U-I-I and Davies with a D-A-V-I-E-S. Um, and my website is exactly that, suidavies.com. So um, every other piece of information you can find there. Thank y'all for coming today. This is your boy, Mr. Billy, representing Broward County Libraries. We'll see you later.